Every Which Way But Loose was the second highest grossing film of 1978 and the best performing film of Clint Eastwood's career. While the critics hated it, Eastwood's fans couldn't get enough of their serious gunslinger in a more lighthearted role. Starring alongside Eastwood was a cast of characters who made more than one appearance in his other films. So what happened to the cast of Every Which Way But Loose? Sandra Locke. Clint Eastwood's leading lady in both the film and real life, Sandra Locke, continued to act in his films until their relationship ended in 1989, followed by lawsuits and claims of cruelty. Locke was born in Tennessee and earned an Oscar nomination before joining the Eastwood crew. She died of breast cancer in November 2018. Jeffrey Lewis. Jeffrey Lewis grew up in Plainfield, New Jersey, but made his way to Hollywood where he appeared in more than 200 films and television shows. He can be seen in seven Eastwood films. Lewis continued working steadily after Every Which Way But Loose, showing up on almost any hit show from the 1970s or 80s that you can name, including Salem's Lot, Flo, Mama's Family, Falcon Crest, The A-Team, Magnum P.I., The Golden Girls, and House, to name a few. Lewis was married three times and had eight children, one of whom is actress Juliette Lewis. On April 7, 2015, Jeffrey Lewis died of a heart attack at age 79. Wait until I pass the whole test before he tells me I'm too old. He should have remembered my wig. Actress, screenwriter, and playwright Ruth Gordon was in show business almost her entire life, having signed a contract with MGM in the 1930s. In 1969, Gordon won a Best Supporting Actress Oscar award for her work in Rosemary's Baby, beating her Every Which Way But Loose co-star Sandra Locke for the honor. She was again nominated for an Oscar for her role in the cult classic Harold and Maude. Following Every Which Way But Loose, Gordon continued working in film and television until her death at age 88 on August 28, 1985. Her husband of 43 years was at her side and said that even her last day of her life was typically full with walks, talks, errands, and a morning of work on a new play. John Quaid. Well, it appears to me that there can't be too many guys driving around this valley with an ape. Already a veteran TV actor before his role of gang leader Chola in Every Which Way But Loose, Quaid continued to work mostly in television on shows including Buck Rogers, The Dukes of Hazard, Knight Rider, The Fall Guy, and Baywatch. Quaid was an outspoken opponent of the U.S. government and believed it had become drastically different from the Founding Fathers' intent. He gave numerous lectures on what he believed was the new world order of the current government. On August 9, 2009, Quaid died at his home in Rosemont, California at the age of 71. Beverly D'Angelo. Few out there know that Beverly D'Angelo worked as an illustrator at Hanna-Barbera Studios and as a singer before pursuing a career in acting. While living in Canada, she became a backup singer for American-born rockabilly singer Rompin' Ronnie Hawkins' band, The Hawks. After a few lineup changes, The Hawks was transformed into the legendary rock group, The Band. As for D'Angelo, after Every Which Way But Loose, she landed the film that would make her career when she was cast in National Lampoon's Vacation alongside Chevy Chase. Since then, D'Angelo has become a staple of film and TV and has appeared on such shows as HBO's Entourage and Mom, Shooter, and Insatiable. Hank Worden. Huh? What is it? Raised on a cattle ranch in Montana, Worden made his way to Hollywood after being discovered on a dude ranch by Billy Burke who was herself best known as playing the good witch Glinda in the classic film, The Wizard of Oz. After Every Which Way But Loose, Worden continued to work in both film and TV, most notably in the cult comedy, The Ice Pirates, as well as on Knight Rider and Twin Peaks. After his wife of 37 years passed away in 1977, he became roommates with fellow actor Jim Beaver. Hank Worden died peacefully during a nap at his home in Los Angeles on December 6, 1992. He was 91 years old. Dan Vatis. Born in Shanghai, China, the brawny handsome Vatis, who served in the U.S. Navy, found fame starring in various Italian film roles. In perhaps perfect casting, the six foot four inch bodybuilder became best known for his role in the 1964 film The Triumph of Hercules. After Every Which Way But Loose, Vatis' film career was mostly confined to parts in other Eastwood films. Sadly, on June 11, 1987, Dan Vadis was found dead in his car in the California desert. 
His death was ruled an accidental drug overdose with acute ethanol and heroin morphine intoxication. He was 49 years old. James McKitchen. Oh, white boy's crazy son of a bitch in the world. Oh, what the hell is that butt number? Born in Rennert, North Carolina, James McKeachin served in the U.S. Army during the Korean War, which he barely survived after being seriously wounded and nearly left for dead following an ambush. McKeachin was one of only two soldiers to survive the ambush. Following his military career, McKeachin worked as a fireman and then a policeman before making his way to Hollywood. As if that weren't enough, in 1973, McKeachin became the first African-American man to have his own show on NBC, Tenafly. He continued to find steady work after Every Which Way But Loose, landing roles in popular TV series including T.J. Hooker, Hill Street Blues, Perry Mason, and Matlock. In 2005, he became an Army Reserve Ambassador, which carries the protocol of a two-star general. In addition to acting, the now 90-year-old veteran and actor worked on behalf of the military and veterans. Walter Barnes. What did you hear of Tank Murdoch before, kid? They say you're the best. They do, huh? Wow. After serving in the nice Army during World War II, Walter Barnes played professional football as a guard for the NFL team, the Philadelphia Eagles. After his sports career ended, Barnes turned to acting, appearing on a local Philadelphia television show. Like Dan Battis, Barnes found the most success in Italy. After Every Which Way But Loose, Barnes worked on the TV series Walking Tall and the TV miniseries North and South. He stopped acting in 1987 due to diabetes, which increasingly worsened. Walter Barnes passed away on January 6, 1998, at the age of 79. Manus. Eastwood's best snake, Clyde, was played by the charming Manus, who returned to work with his trainers in Las Vegas following his breakout role. He made an appearance on the sitcom Cheers, but other than that, very little is known about where Manus ended up. It appears he was part of the Bobby Barrosini show in Vegas that was shut down after PETA obtained a video of the great apes being abused by their trainer. Barrosini later moved his act to Branson, Missouri until the United States Fish and Wildlife Service canceled his wildlife permit. Some of the Barrosini orangutans were sent to a wildlife refuge. We certainly hope that Manus ended up in a safe place. Lastly, legendary actor Clint Eastwood was still going strong, both acting and directing, as of 2020. We wish him many more years. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and to click the bell to be notified of new videos. And to like this video.